guys, Rochelle here with Amethyst Ascension. If you are new here, welcome. And if you are returning, thank you so much for joining me again. So today I wanted to do a video on all of my astrology decks and astrology books. Pretty much what has inspired me, you know, along my path. Because one of the things that I do want to start doing on my channel is talking more about astrology and how we can use it or how I have used it in order to help me understand a lot about my personality, about um, pretty much, I mean, and this is my own belief, but what I have charted for my life and how it really makes sense with the things that happen in my life. So the first astrology deck that I ever got was a gift. I believe this is the first one. A gift from my son. Or no, no, no. Um, I can't remember. I think this one was first, but I could be wrong. It could have been this one. I don't know. I think it's this one. But anyways, he got me this for Christmas one year as well as a um, uh, dream catcher. And I loved it. And this is the Black Moon Astrology Cards. It is um, one of my most viewed walkthroughs on my channel. Um, I did end up, this is the book, I did end up modifying mine. I cut off all the edges which I love it even better, and it was easier for me to use. And these are in order. Most of mine, I believe, are in order. Um, at least the ones that I use in order to look at my birth chart. Uh, so, the way that I use these, and I use a lot of them because I have several different ones. Well, I guess I should just show like my collection first instead of just uh, like losing my focus but I use a lot of them in the same way but I like seeing the different perspectives because I believe that if you go to an astrologist I don't care if they're all the same I don't care if they're western I don't care if they're true sidereal I don't care if they're Vedic you're gonna get a different perspective because of how somebody sees astrology just like tarot just like anything else so if you, with the exact same chart, go to 10 different astrologers, you're going to get something different from each and every one of them. And I think that's beautiful because it is all about perspective and how somebody sees it. And one person's way of seeing astrology might click a little bit better than another way. You know, it, it's a personal preference. So I like getting the cards that have, like for instance, with this one, uh, the luminaries. And then all of the planets. And then Chiron. Black Moon Lilith is in here, which was the first time I had ever heard of Black Moon Lilith. Then all of the astrological signs. Minus, of course, Ophiuchus, because this is not a true sidereal uh, deck. And then it talks about all the different houses um, and keywords to what each one of those mean. But some people also or astrologists have I think different emphasis on what they believe that a house also represents so or at least in keyword form let's put it that way you know like the priority of that house and then sorry I keep checking because my dog is out um, they've got the elements in the stack then they've got the nodes in the stack They've got eclipse, so well, they've got lunar eclipse and solar eclipse, and what that means. They've got part of fortune, grand trine, grand cross, yod, Jupiter return, Saturn return, Mercury retrograde, and void, of course, moon. And this one is so cool because the book is so good. I this was really. I mean, regardless of which one came first, this one got me more um, understanding of what the moon's energy can do, depending on what sign it's in and what phase it's in. And that was very 
interesting to me, but what really got me diving into astrology was this book when I started going through each and every one of these cards and in conjunction with this particular book. It was like, and this is when I was still learning uh, Western, when I had just started learning Western astrology. At that point, I didn't know about Vedic. I knew about Chinese, but I really didn't take it seriously. I remember learning about Chinese um, Zodiac from like going to Oriental restaurants, Chinese restaurants, right? And getting like the placemats that have all of them. So depending on what year you were born, and that's even another thing. It said that I was a, like a boar. And because I was born in 1971, but the fact is I was born in January of 1971, which is before the new year in Chinese. So I was actually a dog, but I didn't even know that until, gosh, I was maybe 48 years old. <laughs> so that just goes to show you, you know, dig a little bit deeper because you'll find out other things that you didn't realize. So I love this deck. Absolutely. And then, of course, oh, and then, of course, the Moonology deck. And this might have been the first deck because I remember setting up a moon altar. And if I remember, I will put a card to my moon altar. This was from a few years ago. Um, and it looks super cool. Um, but it didn't last long because I wanted to use the space for other things. So, although I could still set it up because I still have all the candles. I just don't have them out. Um, but anyways, I loved this. Because even though I do follow a different system, you know, than Western... These are all still, I mean, I can perfectly use all of these because it's about the energy of what that moon is, you know, in either its phase or whether or not it's in a certain sign. It's just, it's usually not in the sign that Western says, but that doesn't matter by using these Oracle decks. So I found these a wonderful resource to help me on my uh, learning, and I'm still learning, of course. There's tons to learn. It's a never-ending thing, so I think that's why I like choosing certain things to learn because, I mean, what I find so enthralling is the learning process itself. Okay, hopefully that did not mess with my video because I was just getting a call. Um, where was I? Yeah, the, it's the learning process itself that, these are the facts, that is so enthralling to me. So, picking a topic like tarot, I feel like it's an always journey. Just when you think you might understand that, you know, something else, somebody else's perspective can broaden that even further. Or something happens, and it's associated with a certain card, and then you're like, oh, <laughs> Okay, so I feel like it's always a learning journey, and I love that. So, let me get some of these out of the way. So, the next one that I got was uh, the Vedic Astrology Study Deck. And also the book, these are both by Julianne Victoria, um, the book is phenomenal. The cards are friggin' amazing. They, I've said before, many of the decks that I have are not for reading decks. They're for learning decks. So, although it seems like I have a large collection, I do. But a lot of mine are not in just books. Because I feel like if you get a good deck that's also got a great book, it is such a wonderful learning tool. And I look at cards like flashcards because I remember when, as a kid, my mom would put um, some of us kids, because I have lots of cousins and stuff. My mom is one of several, several uh, brothers and sisters. And all of, then all of their kids. So I have a lot of cousins. 
But anyways, my mom would get flashcards and she would do like um, arithmetic and um, spelling with us and test us and we would all get in lines and we would do it and we would cheer each other on and we learned really good that way and I remember when I was learning my times tables and stuff like that it was flashcards so and that is how I learn really well so I like having the visual of something like this and another thing that I want to mention about astrology you know, some people use Vedic, some people use Western, some people use trace, True Sidereal or Real Sky. Real Sky and True Sidereal are slightly different, but, and I stick more with True Sidereal, but as somebody that likes to incorporate, like in my witchery, I like to incorporate many different paths and um, cultures. It is the same with, um, my tarot, I like to incorporate uh, numerology and astrology and symbolism and intuition and the meanings, of course, the Rider Waite meanings and uh, Tarot de Marseille, um, uh, Thoth. So I am an eclectic kind of person. So when I look at astrology, I look at what I've learned in um, Vedic, which is very limited but I take what I have learned and I take what I have learned in Western and I take what I have learned in every single one of these and I incorporate it into like a system that works for me. That is how I see astrology, just like everything else. I like being eclectic. So I love these cards because that is exactly what they are. They are like flashcards. So you can lay your chart or what's happening, transits and stuff like that, and say, okay, so the sun is in this card, right? Or in this sign right now and in this house, what does that mean? And then you look at the keywords on each of the cards and many of my decks are like this. And then it helps me to understand. And the more and more you do that, the more and more it becomes like a second nature. So the first time you ride a bike, you're probably gonna fall down, maybe even the first 10 times, but then then it becomes something that you are so used to. Just like driving a car. Have you ever driven somewhere? And this is probably dangerous, but I've done it a million friggin' times. And you forget about the journey, how you got from point A to B because you've traveled it so many times, like going to work the same place that you worked and you were like in a daze. Well, I feel like learning is like that. So when I tell somebody or suggest or recommend to somebody, just use your cards. I mean that because the more you use your cards, the more it becomes like second nature and that's how we learn is through repetition. That's where it becomes almost like cemented into our brains, or at least that's, uh, that's how it works for me. But I love these cards. And the beautiful thing about this deck is once you get past, well, I should say that this also has the luminaries and it has Mercury through Saturn because it does not use the uh, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto, the last planet that in Vedic astrology, it's more traditional. They only used what they believed they could see in the sky at that time. Although, I beg to differ. I think that we do in our past, maybe not passed down in our history for a reason, but I do believe in our past that we knew all of the, those things. And if you even look at the ceiling of Dandara, we know about at least Ophiuchus, right? Which, anyways, I digress. So I believe that our um, ancients had much more technology than what mainstream archaeologists, well, most of them want to want to admit. So this also has Rahu and Ketu. And then it also has like all of the different signs and a few words um, who it's ruled by, whether or not it's cardinal, um, what element it's based off of, and the symbol for each one of them. And that goes, you know, obviously through Pisces, Aries through Pisces. And then we have our um, 12 houses, 
which like I said, I love, I love the, the wording and the, I'm sorry, I'm not sure if you can see that, the wording and the um, key cards or keywords for each of them. And then we get into, and this is what I found so fascinating. Although I did find this stuff fascinating as well and a wonderful resource. But I thought this was so fascinating because it talks about all of the nakshatras, which are the different moon mansions in Vedic astrology because they are, in Vedic astrology, they are so big into um, the moon astrology. And mine, and I'm not sure if these are in order, Mine is the 12th Nakshatra. I think it's this one. Uttara Falaguni. And I'll show you in the book, because this book, they do not come together. At least they didn't when I purchased it. Um, where's the Nakshatras? Yes, mine is 12, according to Vedic astrology. Uttara Falaguni. Uttara Falaguni is the 12th of the 27 Nakshatras. Uttara, which means concluding, is the second half of the constellation shared with the previous one, Purva Falaguni. And like Purva Falaguni, the symbol for Uttara Falaguni is also the bed, which represents the flow of power, courage, and ambition from the higher self into the physical and earthly plane. Each of the four legs of the bed symbolizes the four koshas, or sheaths, that our souls, souls experience here on earth, the physical, Anamaya Kosha, the subtle, Pranamaya Kosha, and the emotional or astral Manapaya Kosha, and the intellectual uh, Vajanamaya Kosha. I hope I said that right. The ruling planet is the sun, which represents our higher selves, our souls, and the divine, our source of life, power, and creation here on earth. The ruling deities, like Uttara's first half, are Aryaman and Bhaga, showing this too to be a very fortunate nakshatra. Uttara Falaguni's motivation is Maksha, and it holds all three guna qualities, Sattva, Rajas, and Tamas. Those with natal moon in Uttara Falaguni are able to unify the inner and outer with the awareness of being a soul experiencing human existence. They can achieve success both material and spiritually. So this spans from 26 to 40 degrees in Leo to 10 degrees in Virgo. It's ruled by the sun, Deities are Baga and Aryaman. The symbol is the bed, and the guna and motivation are all three gunas and mokshas. Now, not all of them have that. And like I said, there's 27. And this book goes on to talk about what the, um, the three gunas are, sattva, rajas, and tamas, what those mean, and what moksha means. And it's just wonderful. I cannot stress for anybody that is interested in learning more about astrology, even beyond what, you're, what you have learned thus far. If you haven't learned about Vedic, I would look into it. I mean, I have nothing but mad respect for uh, Julianne Victoria and, and this um, deck. It's just amazing. And the amount of stuff that you can learn is excellent. And you can use it in, like I said, putting like your chart out and really laying them out and it telling you a story, but through the eyes of Vedic astrology. So that is the Vedic astrology study deck and shedding light on Yoitisha. So let me get that out of the way. So the next deck that I got, oh my goodness, I'm not even sure. So I'm just going to start doing these. I got this one. And this is from um, Into Oracle or Intuit Oracle. And there's several different kinds. I've actually, I just backed one on Kickstarter uh, a while ago, and I should have that come in too. So this shows all of the different zodiac signs and different houses in here with like different things. 
So like yes or no, eight. It's time. It's time for action. Things are fast tracked to unfold quickly and smoothly. So ninth house Capricorn, master. Discipline, working smart, focus, structure, teaching, training, conquer, overcome. These are all like um like first house Leo, knight, confident, heroic, messenger, fearless, assertive. These are really good like reading cards that have that also teach you because of all of the um associations up here and then the keywords. And it's just a really modern cool looking I mean there's a lot of cards here but they're a little bit smaller so these are great for if you do um readings like live readings fast readings and people want to know maybe a little bit or you want to be able to incorporate some um astrology into it especially if you're starting from nowhere and as I said repetition really really helps So that was the Zodiac 108. They are on, I think you can get these on Etsy. If not, they have a website. And it's the, the IntuitStore.com. If I remember, I will put um, all the links to these decks. So another one that I love, whoops. And I'm making a, tons of sound here, is the Heavenly Bodies Astrology. And this is by Lily Ashwell. And the box is so pretty. I love that the book is hardbound with a little ribbon so that you can keep your place. And it's Nothing like super long, straight to the point. And what this deck has, and I'm not sure, I think these are all in order too. I like to keep them in order so that I can easily use them when I'm going through like my birth chart or somebody else's birth chart or transiting or what have you. Yeah, the luminaries, the sun and moon. Then we've got all of our planets through uh, Pluto. And these have keywords too, like Mercury, think, learn, network, and communicate. Venus is give and receive love, find value and see beauty. Mars is move forward and defend self. Jupiter is grow and expand. Um, Saturn is feel restricted, experience, struggle, learn hard work and patience. Radically change with Uranus, Neptune, dream and transcend pluto transform so i love that i think the cards themselves are just absolutely beautiful maybe i should bring this down a little bit closer there i hope that's better um then we have aries through pisces so all of the beautiful different cards no a fucus is not in this either because this is based off of western astrology and then we have all of the house cards through 12. And I like that all of the um, more than one keyword is on these. I love that about this um, deck. So for like house one, individuality, self-image and approach to life. House two, physical security, possessions, material values and self-worth. Early learning, childhood relations, the rational mind and communication. House 3, and on and on it goes through House 12. Then we have, of course, our North Node and South Node. So, destined to have is the North Node, kind of like your mission in life kind of thing. The South Node is um, destined to release, which is like that thing that you were really good at in your previous life, that you learned your lesson and you are coming into this life with that strong aspect. You know, you're confident in that area, but that's not necessarily what's supposed to be part of your mission. That's where your north node kind of balances it out. So 
this is like past life where that's at, which is cool. And then we've got Chiron thing that we we hurt from, and then we have to turn around and heal ourselves. You know that thing that we can turn around and um, that was like an adversary or something that happened to us. Um, this can be physical, this can be emotional, whatever. And then we turn around and not only heal ourselves, but become a healer of this particular thing. That's what Chiron represents. And then we've got what Cardinal, fixed and mutable means. And it shows which, um, you know, uh, signs are cardinal. So we have Aries, Cancer, Libra, and Capricorn are our cardinals. We have Taurus, Leo, um, Scorpio, and Aquarius are our fixed. And what that means down at the bottom. And then we've got our mutable with Gemini, Virgo, Sagittarius, and Pisces. <laughs> and it just so happens that that is my... Um, my sun, that is my moon, and that is my rising sign. So I am so mutable. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. So then we've got like our yang and yin showing the feminine uh, signs and the masculine signs and what that means down at the bottom. So yang being our masculine, which is also represented by the sun. The sun in polarity is... Um, positive and it's masculine so proactivity expression doing and forward motion and then we've got our yin which is our negative polarity which is um, feminine so we've got intuition trust which is the moon intuition trust patience spirituality and receptivity then we've got our signs I'm our elements earth air water and fire and what those can mean I love this deck then we've got opposition these are um, aspects aspecting that happens on our charts and that also happens um, through transits and stuff like that so that's how we can see how certain things are going to affect us is through whether or not you have an opposition and what that opposition means whether or not you have a sextile what that means a square because they're all at degrees as well um, and what that could mean conjunction and trying so I love this deck also it is a wonderful resource and what I like to do is take all of my decks that are like this that have these and Take like all of my house cards, all of my sun card, or all of my planetary cards, my house cards, and my sign cards, and see the different perspectives all at the same time as I'm doing my reading. You know what I mean? To get an overall, because each one of these decks is going to bring a different flair. So, and you can really do some massive digging, massive digging, and realization just by having these particular decks without getting a um, uh, professional reading. Although I highly suggest getting professional readings in order to see how other people um, who are astrologists actually see that chart. But like everything else, like dream work and all that, I think that the best thing that we can do is also learn ourselves and see what we think of that. So um, another one that I got, these are called the Karma Cards. And these are, I seen this on a, I think a Gaia um, video and a guy was going through who had created these, using these cards and talking about all the houses and um, the signs and all that. And I love the way he did it. And this is a very clever way of using these cards. So let me show you. So these are our house cards. These are our science cards. I'll turn them over in a second. These are our planets cards. More houses and signs. Okay, so, so for me, so what are these houses? 
So if I'm looking at the first house, and the first house is always started by whatever your ascendant is. It's the sign that's coming up on the horizon. And mine happens to be Gemini. And do I have anything in my first house? Uh, let me pause. Okay, so I don't have anything in my first house. So let's pick a different house. So let's pick the fifth house, okay? Give me a second and let me get the cards really quick just to show you how you can use these and use any of them really, but... Okay, so for me in my fifth house, using True Sidereal, I have three different signs that are in my fifth house, which is Libra, Scorpio, and Ophiuchus. Although, I also have four planets in my fifth house. And the fifth house itself is of like expression and the things that we do for fun, self-expression and, and you know, stuff like that. So fun romance, making art, um, and these are the different ways that you can look at it. The power of love, investment, gambles, and other games, and your creations, and with the trust of a child, fun romance, and making art, and do it dramatically. But, so I'm going to show you. So I've got Mars and Jupiter, although Jupiter and Neptune are very much on the cusp between Libra and Scorpio and but so if we look at Libra in uh, fifth house with Mars let me find Mars so what that can mean with the trust of a child uh, energize and relationships because I believe you, you really always put the planet second and the house first I think I think that's the way that these are supposed to work or fun romance and making art confront and the beauty of do it dramatically force yourself to and do it with your partners or we can turn that around oh did I do that right yeah we can turn that around. The power of love, the drive for, cooperation to perfect. Investment in gambles and other um, games, the confronting of and decisions about. And then we've got your creations, action. So these keywords will give you an idea of what how that energy plays itself out. And then, same with, um, where did I put it? Where is it? Jupiter. So instead of Mars. But then you can also look at how the conjunctions and whether or not they work with each other. And from here, you can see that they are a trine. So they are working, well, their conjunction and what a conjunction means. So the power of love, learn and teach. Nope. I got this the wrong way. The power of, the granting of, cooperation to perfect investment gambles and other games, blessings from, decisions about. Oh, wait a minute. We can also look at it like the granting of, cooperation to perfect, the power of love. Blessings from, Decisions about investments, gambles, and other games. Good fortune resulting from the fairness shown by your creations. And then you can turn it around and do it the other way as well. But Or however they come up. If they come up in reverse, like in this situation right here, you could look at the granting of relationships, the power of love, or blessings from the beauty of investment, gambles, and blah, blah, blah. So you see how that, that works? But... This one is a little bit more confusing, but fun, I think. And the guidebook. 
and it comes right out of this box. This is by Monty Farber. And it goes into more detail about the houses and the structure, blah, 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 blah. So this is also a really super fun deck. And just another way to explore and all the different ways that we can explore. So those are called the Karma Cards. All right, so another deck. <clears throat> and when I do birth charts and stuff, that's what they look like. You get the um, digital copy. I just email it right to you. and But it comes on also another piece of paper that shows what each symbol that's on the chart, what that represents. For those that don't know astrology and don't know what they mean, you know. So, anyways. Let's set that aside. So, another one that I have is Oracle of the Radiant Sun. And in truth, I have not used these a lot, but I see I have seen these used, and they are just wonderful. This year, I plan on well, um, very soon. I wanted to wait till my room was done, and I've got. A couple other rooms that we're going to be doing here very very shortly so my time is very limited but after that I plan on extending my knowledge through courses more courses on astrology um, but so we've got like Jupiter and Aries enterprise and we've got the moon in Taurus exaltation we've got the moon in uh, cancer friendship so this is a good deck I would say to use in conjunction with um let's say a deck that has um like your deacons but you want to understand what that deacon means these cards can help a little bit more in detail with that so the sun or just in general with your astrology the sun in leo egotism right? The moon in Capricorn, practicality. Um, Mercury in Aries, re uh, restlessness. Yeah, boy, that's the truth. So, um, Mars in Aquarius, rebellion. Yes. So, you see what these, these are wonderful cards for that. I should use these more often. I really should. This was the first set of um, decks that I started separating right when I was organizing uh, my downstairs was putting all of my Oracle deck or all of my astrology decks all in one area because I had been planning on doing this particular um video for quite a while showing you my astrology decks then another one is the moon oracle and this is also by caroline smith and joe uh estrop or estrop same as the oracle of the sun radiant sun so same creators although the moon oracle these cards are much much larger but we have our uh, different um, goddesses in association with the different moons. So these are all the full moons, I believe. These are red moons, black moons, or dark moons, full moon, or that could be new moon, actually. I, I don't know. But and then we've got um, also like Mars. In the sun which is volcano we've got the sun in jupiter which is musician we've got jupiter in uh, venus which is palace we've got um mercury in saturn 
stone. Hmm. And then I think, don't we have our Nakchatras? Oh, we've got the different moon phases. That's what it is. The moon phases in here and what that can mean. So the first one is impulse, which is the waxing crescent or the waxing fire moon. So when the crescent moon is in a fire sign and it's in the waxing, it can mean impulse. And it goes through each of the fire signs, or I mean each of the, the different phases if it was in a fire um, sign. And then you've got the same with uh, earth signs. So the fire signs would be Sagittarius, Aries, Leo. The earth signs would be um, Capricorn, Virgo, um, Taurus. And then you've got your air signs. That would be Libra, Aquarius, and Gemini. So the different phases there. And then you've got your water ones, which would be like Scorpio, Pisces, and Cancer. So I think this deck is, I, this is one I've also not used a whole lot of. But I definitely want to change that as well. Do a little bit of shopping in my own shelves. And then, whoops, my apologies. The other one that um, I had showed you guys was the astrology deck. And I showed this, I believe, in my September um, like roundup. I love this deck. And the reason why I love this deck so much is because this is truly like a um, flashcard system. So we've got our planet cards, but instead of having to go into the book for greater detail and just a few keywords, these actually have a whole write-up. So like the sun, in astrology, the sun represents our identity and our conscious mind. The sun, which changes zodiac signs approximately every 30 days, which that's, that's not the case um, with true sidereal or what's really in the sky because it depends on how many, um, how big each sign is that sits on the ecliptic. So it might be in Scorpio for like 12, 13 days where it's in Pisces for, you know, 40 some odd days. So, um, but anyways, it's the most important feature of our birth chart because it represents our ego and will leading us on our path, life's path towards our goals and giving us our unique personality. Our sun sign dictates how the world sees us. Well, so does our rising sign, but so the moon and I think the moon does too. I think they all do. But the moon represents our emotions as part of ourselves that we cannot express but feel intuitively on a deep level. The moon, which changes zodiac signs every 2.5 days, shows our innermost emotional preferences, which are safeguarded in our hearts and rarely shared with others. Traditionally, the moon represents our relationship with our own mother and the way that we nurture others as well as where and how we feel safe within relationships with others and with ourselves. And it goes on with all of them all the way through Pluto, which I absolutely love. And that's where I like having several different decks because you get a perspective, like I said, of what each person who created these decks that is an astrology person, how they come to astrology. So I feel like when I am digging into all of these decks and seeing the, the same pers or different perspective for any given um, uh, like placement, that it gives me a more broader or rounded view. So then we've got the signs. And that again, now one of the things I love about this deck is also how many asteroids it has. But, so, like for instance, I am a Sagittarius, actually I'm a Sagittarius Capricorn cusp. But Sagittarius says, 
represented by the centaur, a half human, half horse, the sign Sagittarius is the magnificent archer of the zodiac. Sagittarians are skilled in bringing life's major issues into full perspective. Very generous and jovial, they will give the shirt off their back to anyone in need. Because of this, Sagittarians must be careful of overextending themselves and being too quick to make decisions. Ruled by the planet Jupiter, they are ready and willing to have a good time and can often forget about their responsibilities. They also have an uncanny ability to land on their feet in tough circumstances. So, now the other half of me is Capricorn. So, one of the most serious signs of the Zodiac, Capricorn is here to get the job done. Represented by the goat, Capricorns are the entrepreneurs and CEOs of the astrology wheel, ready to tackle hard lessons without breaking a sweat. They are ruled by the planet Saturn, which teaches patience and serves as a guide towards inner authority. A major shift happens for most Capricorns during a huge transit known as Saturn Return, which occurs every 27 to 29 years. This is a challenging time, but also an opportunity for Capricorns to grow beyond their wildest dreams. So, you can see those two things are like totally different signs. And I always thought this was just me from other ones. But then realized, in truth, I was born under this sign, but almost in this sign. But in Western astrology, it says that I'm a Capricorn Aquarius cusp, which is completely different. So anyways, I love that um, they have like the, the meanings right on the cards themselves. It makes it so much easier when um, trying to learn. Now, look at all of the asteroids this has. Because this is another area that I really want to delve into that I don't know a whole lot about, other than Chiron, really. Um, and a little bit about uh, Black Moon Lilith, but not the, not the asteroid Lilith. Totally different. Look at those. And I also want to learn more about the part of fortune and stuff. So... Very friggin' cool. And then, of course, more information about what a conjunction means, what sextile means, how they work with each other, um, the per the percentages or the um, uh, degrees of, you know, the aspecting, like 120 degrees is a uh, um, trine, sextiles are 60 degrees, conjunctions are within, like, zero to three degrees of each. And I'm not sure if that's always the same. I'm not sure if that changes. But then it talks about eclipses and transits, planetary nodes, um, and then lunar stuff also like Chiron and the waning crescent and all the different phases. It's just a wonderful resource of a deck. Just wonderful. Super moons. Yada, yada, yada. The only thing that this one doesn't have is the houses. But it does have it in this chart. And this is what it all looks like. So whatever is actually in your birth chart or your, um, like your rising sign would be over here in your first house. That's what starts your whole chart off is what your rising sign is. Then they can put all the placements in after that. And this is how it works around. Instead of like a regular clock, it goes, it's counterclockwise. So, and then it shows on this chart, and I know you can't see it, but like what the first house signifies on and on and on. So it's kind of neat. And then, I think I only have one, oh no, I have two more decks, astrology decks. And this is, I think this was like $12 on Amazon, $11, $12, or something like that. The Astrology Deck. Wonderful resource for learning. Then I got this one. I got this one, I believe, in a um, Witch's Roots box, Moon Magic. And these are wonderful. And just with like 
Waning Gibbous 1, I am curious about my true nature. I seek to understand myself. Waxing Crescent 2, I accept that here now is exactly where I am and that it is the place of profound learning and yada, yada, yada. They're all like that with really beautiful artwork on the other side. These are wonderful in a large reading or something like that because they don't take up much room either. They're It's a small deck and, you know, just to have, I mean, you could even do something like that. It's just beautiful. You can learn from that, but I think it's more just like a your basic oracle. And then, of course, Real Sky Astrology. Now, the reason I say that Real Sky Astrology is a little bit different than True Sidereal it's because true sidereal takes into account the midpoints of where the the last star in one constellation and the last star or the stars that are closest to the ecliptic line and it finds the midpoint and that's where it cuts off the constellation size whereas real sky i believe takes still the um uh what is the name of that association like the IAU or something like that uses those guidelines for the constellation associate, you know, the sizes. And I prefer the midpoint. I think that's the most mathematically right thing to do as far as seeing where one constellation begins and one ends. So, but this deck is also wonderful. The artwork is stunning. This is by Julie Kusha Watts. She's a beautiful artist. She's the one that started me on my journey because of this deck and because of also doing an interview and talking to her personally. Um, and she had done my chart and I was like, whoa, I couldn't believe it. She gives dates on her website also, um, which is... And she's done other decks like Ancestral Path Tarot, the Blue Moon Tarot, uh, the Mott Tarot, Journey into Egypt, and Real Sky. And I believe that she is currently working on a like um, Great Year deck, which is like several, several uh, hundreds of cards, I believe, for the whole system, which I can't wait to see. But this deck is fabulous, and you can use it just like a regular tarot, however. And these are sold separately. The book is wonderful. It is a wonderful um, like resource to learn also about what cards can be associated with your real sky chart. And although I do run charts over on my amethystascension.com birth charts, you can also get them free if you know about, um, uh, and I mean true sidereal. I can run other charts. I could run Vedic and Western. I just don't. I just run only the, the uh, true sidereal. But you can go to um, masteringthezodiac.com and get a free uh, birth chart, which is the same system that I use, True Sidereal, which is what I love, which seems the most accurate to me as far as actual placement of the stars and the planets and everything, because it's like really what's in the sky. Um, however, it doesn't go into detail. So if you are brand new, not that you couldn't look it up, you could, but if you are brand new, and you don't know what the symbols mean, you're just gonna get a chart and not know what it means. So when I run them, I also send you an email telling you this, like for instance, is in this house under this sign, and it comes on a chart that shows you what the symbols mean down below so that you can associate, well, this symbol is Saturn, this symbol is Chiron, this symbol is the moon, the sun, you know, Aquarius, blah, 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 blah. It shows you. 
and then it sends you on a little bit of the email will send you on a little bit of self exploration like if your son is in Pisces in your sixth house what does it mean go to Google and say what does it mean if my son is in Pisces in my sixth house that's the information that I give you so that you understand what it means and if you are using different books which I want to show you next the books that I have used um, besides the two that I showed you which was the uh, uh, Joy Tisha what shedding light on Joy Tisha and the real sky astrology this is one that I've just barely scratched the surface just started reading it it is still a mystery to me because this is based off of Western astrology not where the stars actually are um, as far as how it's used with the tarot. Now, when it's used in like 10 day increments, well, that changes their placements because of the size of the actual uh, zodiac signs, the constellations. So, but I'm, I'm going to make my own deacons and figure that out. Maybe that's a project that I'm going to do next year. This was just a fun read. It's simple. I got this from Barnes and Noble. It was, gosh, uh, maybe like eight or seven dollars, maybe. And it's a cute little, very um, nicely illustrated book. It's fun, hardbound, really well made that amount of money I thought it was really good this was the first actual um, tarot and astrology book that I got and I got this several years ago when I started doing um, my 78 days of tarot started that and I got through the major arcana and this is where I was learning about um, astrological associations with the tarot itself and this is a good book that I would highly recommend like Two of Cups is Venus and Cancer. So, Two of Wands, Mars and Aries. On and on and on, and it's got a chart. Correspondences with the Major Arcana. Doo -doo. See? It's a great uh, resource. This one is wonderful also. The only astrology book you'll ever need. Not true, but really good book. Tons of information. I love it. Oh, I do have another book upstairs too. I forgot. I think it's called Keywords in Astrology, something like that. <coughs> Excuse me. And the last book, this one was instrumental in me learning in a big way and then turning around and also teaching. Uh, not to mention everything that I have shown you so far is what I have used. Um, the Black Moon astrology cards were instrumental. Um, and the Heavenly Bodies Astrology was instrumental. The um, uh, Vedic Astrology deck was instrumental. The Real Sky Astrology was instr int instrumental. <laughs> but this one actually breaks it down. It is like a workbook helping you to understand okay so if my sun is in this sign what does that mean if my moon is in this sign in this house what does it mean it breaks it all down it breaks down what you know the different um elements and polarities and um cardinals you know the different uh cardinal fixed and mutable what that means um even it shows the um like, how do I say it? It shows the um, graduation of the zodiac, more or less, starting at your Aries, working your way all the way to Pisces. What that means, it's just, this has been the book of all books for me in astrology, and I cannot stress that enough, because it is a hands-on workbook, and I did actually write in this. I have written in this, and then other ones I started putting it into um, onto other sheets because then I was like, oh, then I learned a little bit about, let's see, like, <laughs> Worcester, uh, true sidereal and it all changed, so I stopped putting it in writing. 
but it was instrumental. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm still fighting this crap. So that is everything. Gosh, I can't even see how, how long this has been. I hope it's not been too terribly long, but I am going to be starting um, the series. I watched Saturnarium do uh, many videos thus far about her chart and, and what it means and how she shows it alongside Tarot, and she's just brilliant. I just love her so much, and she inspires me all the time, and I wanted to do this, but with everything, it's been kind of chaotic, and my my stuff has been in bins for a while, and my computer down here had been, you know, shut down for a couple of months, and because of the move and the painting, and I've still got more to do, but I do plan on doing more astrology on here and showing astrology along with my tarot practice. So thank you for spending this time with me and I am sending you love always.